Hello everyone, it is Briximus Prime back for another Transformers action figure review and today I'm going to be reviewing the Transformers crossovers Jurassic Park, Tyrannicon Rex, and Autobot JP93. Come on, you didn't even try to name this one. What kind of a name is Tyrannicon Rex? The Rex just makes it seem too tryhard. Rex at the end makes it feel like an edgy 12 year old trying to name it. Anyway, moving on to the packaging. I always love seeing the packaging for these crossover figures. You got that little crossover logo right there, Jurassic Park and Autobots, Jurassic Park, Tyrannicon Rex, uh, Autobot JP93. I guess that's meant to be like a ref reference to um, Bumblebee B127, but come on, you guys didn't even try. 8 Plus, Hasbro, Transformers, uh, you got the Generations logo, Takara, Jurassic Park, and then here on the side, you got the Voltage and the Jurassic Park logo again here on the back. Same thing with that Voltage stuff on this side, except Authentic Transformers! Here on the back of the box, you got that nice image and you got a nice bio here on the back. That bio does state... Tyrannicon Rex is loose. Repeat, Tyrannicon Rex is loose. Do not panic. Autobot JP-93 has been dispatched and is equipped to handle the situation. With state-of-the-art GPS tracking systems and all-wheel and all-wheel drive for transferring bumpy terrain, JP-93 will track down the asset out of containment and return her to her paddock com promptly. If you see Tyrannicon Rex, do not approach her. Please call Jurassic Park Security when you are safely out of range! Anyway... Moving on, I like the big footprint here. Authentic Transformers! And here on the bottom, Authentic Transformers! This thing is three times as authentic. And also officially licensed by Ford. Very nice. That's it for the box. The only accessory that comes with either of these two figures is this single, single-barreled shotgun that comes with JP-93. It's just cast out of black plastic and... It just has some nice molded detail, and you can plug a blast effect there on the end, and honestly, there's nothing much to say about this. Weapon storage. You can just come to the top of the vehicle and just plug this in like so, just upside down, and yeah, pretty standard for for the, the weapon storage. First, taking a look at Tyrannicon Rex. Like, right off the bat, I just have to say, this is a great repaint, and there's honestly nothing much else to say about it that's already been said with Megatron because everyone's reviewed that figure and so there's not a whole lot to say but I will try to keep my opinion unique to this review. In that case, one of the things I really do like about this T-Rex mold both in the Megatron and also the Tyrannicon is there's this nice, nice leathery texture all throughout the figure but one of the main differences between this figure and Megatron is this figure has a very realistic dinosaur color scheme going all throughout it which really picks out those details all that more especially with the realistic eyes and all that browns and tans and but the only problem is some of that red does this black and red does seep through every now and then but it totally makes this figure look so much more superior in dinosaur mode to that megatron figure the only thing about this head sculpt i do not like is how the eye pupils are slightly up so it makes Tyrannicon look like she's kind of bored like <laughs> but one of the things that's kind of disturbing with this figure is when you kind of transform it you realize there's red plastic on the inside and it makes this look kind of gory. KO! Some other things I also like about this figure that carry over from the Megatron is the posability. The posability here is so good that even I even say that there are some dinosaur figures that are not even as posable as this transformable dinosaur. Going over the articulation, the head can rotate side to side and as you do that this panel kind of hinges side to side as well. It can look up and down at the base of this neck and then can look up also using that elbow joint. The head can open up very far and it can rotate that little bit. Shoulders are on this little ball joint here which does allow for a rotation at the arm and a little bit of outward movement. The legs can kick back, they can kick forward, they can move out that little bit without untabbing everything. 
The knee bends. There is a swivel at the knee. Ankles move down. They can move up, and you do get some ankle pivot. Tail can wag from side to side, can hinge up and down a little bit. Tail can wag a little bit and hinge from side to side. So pretty good articulation on this dinosaur, and I really do appreciate some of the stuff that went into this figure. And now for some quick dino comparisons. Here is Tyrannicon Rex with Beast Wars Megatron. And uh, yeah, I still do love this figure a lot. Microphone turned off. Uh, but this figure does have some great paintwork, and I like the beast mode on this one better. But the purple one is still pretty nice as well. But anyway, let's get right on in to the transformation. I'm just kidding. We have to talk about JP93 next. And JP93 transforms into the green and red Ford Explorer, famously seen in Jurassic Park. And this vehicle mode looks very nice. I really do like all the greens and reds and that little bit of yellow that comes on the figure. It's got great detail and like just overall, this is where this figure shines because this is a brand new mold, a brand new sculpt and it really shows because this thing looks so accurate on all angles and you can really tell that Hasbro spared no expense on this figure. I can spare no expense. JP93 doesn't have a hard time rolling or anything. And uh, JP93 is also a very standard deluxe class size, getting into the comparisons. Here is JP93 with the Transformers crossovers Gigawatt, which is a very nice figure. Let me know if you guys want me to review this guy. But yeah, very nice little... You can clearly see these guys are just like a deluxe class figure, only the difference between this guy and this guy is this guy is an entirely brand new mold, where this guy is a very heavy retool. And I really appreciate that. And I'm sure it's quite obvious that these two look great together. I mean, they were in the same box, so of course they would look great together. But this is only half of the package. Let's just get right on in to the transformation. Tyrannicon Rex and JP93 all transformed up into their robot modes, and we've got a lot to cover, so... Hold on to your butts. Tyrannicon Rex has a brand new head sculpt for this particular mold and for this set, and it looks pretty good, but it doesn't really invoke it being a female character, it just makes this look more like even more like a male character. Also, the articulation here is a lot better than Megatron, but we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to the articulation in a second. But it's the only bit of new on this head sculpt is the only thing new on this figure other than the paint scheme. So if you have uh, so if you have Beast Wars Megatron, then you know exactly what to expect with this figure minus the color scheme. And yeah, the color scheme itself is actually pretty well done. And it's 
the only problem is that it's a bit jarring to see the bright red contrasting with the brown. It's kind of a ugly looking contrast, but I do like all the leathery texture which is present from the T-Rex mode. Also from the T-Rex mode, we have a lot of extra baggage and kibble and it does hold back on the figure that little bit. The new head is on a ball joint. It can look up that far and it does kind of come become a little loose when it looks all the way up, but you can also look side to side. Show this untabs a little too easily and it does actually get pretty annoying. Shoulders can rotate a full 360. Untabbing again. Shoulders can move in and out. Bend at the elbow at 90 degrees. This wrist right here hinges up and down and this part twists and this claw can open. This shoulder also features a butterfly joint, moves in and out, bicep swivel. This one also has a bicep swivel, I forgot to mention. And then bend at the elbow and T-Rex head and opening mouth and all that. Waist swivel, hips can move forward, they can kick back that far. This keeps on tabbing, again, moves back that far, forward, out to the side. If you unpeg this and rotate it down, it can move outward even more. Swivel at the knee, bend at the knee, ankles move up and down, and you do get ankle pivots. So pretty good articulation of Tyrannicon Rex. So now let's just get into those comparisons. And getting into the... Compared with Beast Wars Megatron, the one with the superior robot mode. And yeah, like I said, what you see is what you get. My main thing that I always, that I said before is... This guy is a lot better in robot mode because of his pain apps, and honestly, Tyrannicon Rex is a little bit more lackluster in those little details, but overall, I do still like both of these figures in this mold in general. In the robot mode, she makes up for tail. In the robot mode, she makes up for it in the beast mode, so it does make these two pretty well balanced and even with each other. Clever girl. Um, right off the bat, I do like the head sculpt. I can, it kind of looks like they're trying to make him look like Muldoon from the movie. But overall, he does have that kind of, like, hat design like how he did. And the sunglasses, and he's got these green sideburns, which actually look kind of cool. And yeah, overall, it doesn't look that bad. And overall, the figure, just like, and overall, the figure, just like Tyrannicon Rex, is a <clears throat> pretty good figure overall. But again, there's these unpainted parts and and these engineer problems that this thing really could have needed to make it a whole lot better like these little bits of painted silver all throughout the figure and it doesn't even have a waist joint and some of this stuff and it is kind of annoying this back panel here is not the best connection and i would have liked if this kind of pegged together a little bit better but again like i said this figure could have used a lot of nice bits of silver all throughout and it really would have made him all that much more better but Anyway, now getting into the articulation, the head is on a ball joint, it can look up and down that little bit, can swivel from side to side, doors can flap forward and back and it allows for the arm to rotate a full 360, moves in and out by ball joint at the shoulder which allows for a bicep swivel and more than 90 degrees of bend at the elbow, nothing at the wrist, nothing at the waist, they could have easily done that but whatever, legs kick back, they can kick forward, they can move outward, he does have a thigh swivel. It's a very good bend at the knee due to transformation. Ankle pivot. At least he's got some good ankle pivot. And then these little spur heel spurs right here can move as well. So pretty good articulation, I guess. But he could have really used a waist swivel. It really could have benefited from that pretty well. Wasted opportunity here. And here is JP93 next to Gigawatt. And again, I wish this guy had a little bit more paint because it makes this guy... Because this guy had a lot of great engineering and great paint put into him, even with him being a retool. This guy being a brand new mold, he really could have made a better first impression with a little bit more silver paint. But again, I could probably paint it up myself. But anyway, it's just a, it's just a complaint that I wanted to mention. These two look great together because, I mean, they were in the same two-pack, like I said before. But... Overall, there isn't really much else to say about this 2-pack. I mean, JP93 is a brand new mold, and he is a very nice mold, but he really has some issues that could have been fixed. I don't mind the, that he doesn't have bicep swivels, because the ball joints make up for that, but it's his lack of paint that really makes... That really makes the figure not look that great in robot mode. But he, but don't get me wrong, these both look great in vehicle, vehicle and beast mode. But I mean, like, come on, the robot modes feel a little bit half baked, and it does kind of make sense because this is a collab figure that 
collab figures that rely mostly on their vehicle modes, because that's where the collab part comes from, but... Overall, if I had to give this two-pack a rating based on everything that I have both of them accounted for, not counting the names, they could have come up with more clever names, just saying, but if I had to give them a rating on the actual figures themselves, I honestly give JP93 an honest, like, 6, maybe a 7 if I'm being generous out of 10, and for Tyrannicon Rex, honestly, a solid 5 out of 10, maybe a 6 if I'm being generous, but, like, overall, with both of them together, it's a solid, like, 6 to 7 out of 10 two-pack. I'm not really blown away by it, but it is such a novelty two-pack that is fun to have, and I do really love both of their alternate modes very much. And yeah, there isn't really much else to say. I mean, they could have used maybe some more accessories to kind of justify that price point, because the price point is a little bit steep, but, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. So, if you guys enjoyed the review, be sure to give me a like on the video. Be sure to subscribe for more Transformers and action figure reviews. Be sure to check out my Lego, my second channel, Bricksimus Builder. And uh, follow me on Instagram, I guess. And what other YouTube, g generic YouTube sayings did I miss? Um, subscribe to... I'll just see you guys next time, I guess.